Hope to see you soon, brother. And uh, that's one thing about the Church of Christ. We are always looking for the prodigal to come home. And uh, you'll be warmly welcomed. There won't be a... There's not an older brother in the house uh, when it comes to uh, the Lord's the Lord's children coming back. We're all glad to see the... Uh, uh, the, the prodigal son come home, and so we hope that you will will do that soon, and make that uh, make that possible for us to to uh, welcome you back and, and to be with you and to uh, encourage you in the faith. Here's how you can meet with the Church of Christ. If you are in the Eden area, we meet at 250 the Boulevard. My phone number is two seven six three four zero two six five three, or you can reach me at a local number. It's more of an office number three three six three nine four five seven two one. A word from the Lord at gmail.com is how you can reach us and hope you will take advantage of that. If you're in the uh, Martinsville or Danville area, uh, Martinsville, 823 Starling Avenue is where the brethren meet there. Uh, 120 American Legion is where the brethren meet in Danville. And all of these places will be a very, uh, <clears throat> give you a warm welcome and a, a glad you're here. Uh, you may be a stranger when you when you uh, get there, but you'll be a friend when you when you leave, and we certainly hope that you will uh, take advantage of that as well. I heard the last caller, and uh, uh, that was on the, the phone with Mark. Very uh, interesting conversation is going on there, and uh, I thought it was very interesting that so many people want to bring one thing over from the Old Testament, but they don't want to bring anything else. And so just uh, for that reason... I want to uh, just give you a little uh, reminder of Brother John Shannon, who put it so plainly, and uh, we'll just let this be a public service announcement, and then we'll go on with our lesson. But apparently you don't know truth, because if you knew truth, you wouldn't teach your people, watch it, that they're under the law of Moses with tithe and mechanical instruments of music. Now you're bringing the tithing over and the instrumental music over, but what about the burnt offering? I hear the music, but I don't smell no beef. Where's the beef? Where's the beef? In these churches, they got, in your church, every one of them, they got mechanical music, they teach tiny, right? I don't smell no beef. Where's the beef? You had to go back to the Old Testament to get the music. You had to go back to the Old Testament to get the time. Why didn't you bring in the, the beef? Where's the beef? All the congregation worship. So they were worshiping on the Lord Moses. And they had singers sang, trumpet sound, and all of this continued until the burnt offering was finished. Ask your pastor. Some of you people are watching this television program. Ask your pastor. Hey, where's the beef? I don't think there's anybody back there. That's right, friends. I don't think there's anybody back there. When you go to ask them where's the beef, they got the instrument of music, and they say where's the beef, they won't. They can't find it. So, so um, if you're going to bring over one thing from the Old Testament, the instrument of music, what everybody wa- that's what everybody wants. Bring in the burnt offerings, bring in the tithing, bring in the incense. It's all in there. It's all in the Old Testament. Go ahead and have your multiple wives like David did. It's all in the Old Testament. If you're going to bring one thing over, go ahead and bring the rest of it in. Now, let's get to our lesson tonight. One of the things that we get quite often on this program is people calling in and they call us brother, brother this, brother that. And I I can appreciate the fact that they want to have a relationship with us uh, from the standpoint of, of a, of a spiritual nature. I can appreciate that. But the fact of the matter is, friends and neighbors, there's only one way that you and I can be brethren, and that's if we have fellowship the way God says. Now, I want you to notice something that the Bible says about fellowship. We're going to be talking about the foundation of fellowship tonight and what it really takes for us to be brethren and us to be uh, in the same, uh, uh, have the same uh, uh, relationship that they had, that the Christians had in the first century. In 1 John chapter 1, verses 3 through 7, 
And I believe this is a good a verse that sums up fellowship very well. Notice what it says. John says, That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye may also have fellowship with us, and truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son Jesus Christ. Now watch this. John recognized that some people may not have fellowship, but he wanted to have fellowship. He wanted people to have fellowship with him. And he says, here's why. Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son Jesus Christ. And these things write we unto you that your joy may be full. This then is the message which we have heard of him. And declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Now listen. Fellowship... De, uh, between two individuals, between two men, depends upon our relationship, our fellowship with God. Or should I say it this? Fellowship between man and God uh, is, is needed in order for there to be fellowship between two men in the standpoint of we are brethren or we have fellowship that the Bible talks about, spiritual fellowship. John goes on to say in verse 7, he says, But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. So here it is, friends. Fellowship with the Father and his son, Jesus Christ, depends upon us walking in the light as he is in the light. When someone ceases to walk in the light, or someone who does not walk in the light, or is not walking in the light, to begin with, if they are not walking the light, they are not in fellowship with God, and thus they are not in fellowship with anyone else who is walking in the light and has fellowship with God. So we need to understand fellowship from the standpoint of a relationship with God and realize we have to have a fellowship with God in order to have a fellowship one to another in the standpoint of we're all brothers and sisters in Christ. So what is fellowship? What does it mean? Well, the Bible defines the word and uses it this way. He says what fellowship is an association, and this is simply, if you have a, a, a Greek concordance or whatever, there's a Strong's number to it, 2842. But uh, the definition is it's association, community, communion, joint participation, the share which one has in anything or participation. Now, here's the question that we're talking about. Because oftentimes a lot of people in quote-unquote Christianity who believe and profess that Jesus is the Son of God, they think that simply because they believe Jesus is the Son of God, then they have fellowship with everybody else who does the same thing. And I'm saying, friends, there's more to it than that. There's more to just simply say you saying, you believe in Jesus Christ, and me saying I believe in Jesus Christ, that's going to give us fellowship. Fellowship is more than just one common belief between parties. It is more than that. It is the idea of communion or association or joint participation, sharing something. And so that's what we're talking about. So does do all people in Christianity really have fellowship with each other? I know we hear a lot about unity movements and, and uh, uh, fellowship uh, gatherings and so forth, but do they really have fellowship with one another? Can, can uh, fellowship with everyone even be possible? That's really what we ought to consider as well. So let's start with this. Let's go this way. Let's put this picture before you so that we all can see what fellowship really is. Listen, fellowship is a state. If you are in fellowship with God, it is, a, it is a state, it is a relationship you have. That relationship can change. You can be in fellowship with God, and then you can be out of fellowship with God. So you need to realize that fellowship is a state. And just like it is a state or a relationship between God and man, so it is between man and man, between mankind. mankind. Now, there is a connection between fellowship and the Bible. And this is the point that we're going to be making tonight, friends, is this. Fellowship and the foundation of fellowship is based upon or consists 
of how two people, how two people walk together in the light of God's word. Amos said in Amos 3, 3, very familiar verse, can two walk together except they be agreed. Now, we're not talking about being agreed on who makes the best hamburger in town. Or we're not talking about being in agreement on what, which is the best car to drive. We're talking about being in agreement on God's word and following it the way God says. That is what's going to make fellowship possible. That's going to be the foundation of fellowship. So if we put it in a picture, and I try to do this so, so it'll be a very a good visual for you to understand and help you understand what we're talking about as we go through. Fellowship with each other, with you and I, fellowship between us depends upon our fellowship with God. Now listen, friend. If you are walking in the light of God's Word and you have fellowship with God, there is no way for you to have fellowship with me and call me brother or call me, you know, have the same spiritual relationship with each other unless I have that same fellowship with God. If this fellowship bond is broken or does not exist, you cannot then say we have fellowship this way. Otherwise, you start jeopardizing your fellowship with God. See? And that's why we don't include people as in fellowship who are not walking in the light as, 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 uh, as God is in the light. That's why we don't, we don't look at everybody and say, well, we're all in fellowship. No, because we're all looking at the Bible differently and we're not all walking by the same rule. We're not all by, uh, uh, abiding by the same thing. So, remember this. The foundation of fellowship depends upon following God's Word. That's the long and short of it. It depends upon following God's Word. Look at this. In 2 John, verse 9. Don't ask me what chapter. 2 John, verse 9. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. Now, now listen. Do you see what John's saying? If you are not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, you don't have God. If you're not abiding in the doctrine of Christ, you don't have, a, you don't have fellowship with God. That's what we've already seen in 1 John 1. You have to be walking in the light. You have to be uh, abiding in the light in order to have any kind of relationship with God. If you abide in the doctrine of Christ, then you have both the Father and the Son. Now watch. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine. You see the key? The key is a doctrine that is exactly like the doctrine of Christ. If someone comes and does not teach the same doctrine, John says, receive him not into your house, neither bid him Godspeed. For he that biddeth, he that biddeth him Godspeed is partaker of his evil deeds. Now listen. When the Jehovah's Witness and the Mormons come to my door... I don't bid them Godspeed and say, good luck on down the road. As a matter of fact, when they leave my house after we're talking, I pray that they won't find anybody home. I don't want them spreading their doctrine. I don't want them spreading their false doctrine around. Because it's not the doctrine of Christ. I am not going to wish them well and help them on their journey when they're teaching false doctrine. So here's why. If we are going to have fellowship one with another, then we both have to be abiding in the apostles' doctrine. Because if we abide in the doctrine that was given by Christ to the apostles, that was recorded by the apostles and inspired men in this book, if we abide in the teachings of this book, then we will have fellowship with each other. That's the only way we're going to have fellowship. That's the only way we're going to have fellowship this way is if we're both in fellowship with God this way. And if we're not keeping the doctrine of Christ or abiding in the doctrine of Christ, then we don't have fellowship between God and we cannot have fellowship this way on a spiritual nature, spiritual plane, with someone who is or is someone who's not. See? 
Fellowship depends upon our relationship with God, and that depends upon us walking in the light as He is in the light. That's the foundation. Notice, in the first century, in the first century, friends, those who continued in fellowship with God continued in the Word. They continued abiding in the words that were given, and that's what gave them fellowship one with another. Look, in Acts 2, verse 42, And they, the early Christians, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship, and in bringing the bread and prayers. Now, remember what we just read in 1 John 1, verses 6 and 7? If we say we have fellowship with them and walk in darkness, and we lie and do not the truth. If you don't do the truth, you don't have fellowship. But up here, they continued in the apostles' doctrine, and therefore they could continue in fellowship. There was a common bond of fellowship, one with another, because they were both abiding in the doctrine of Christ. They were both abiding in the light. If we walk in the light as he's in light, we have fellowship one with another. That's just that simple. Fellowship one with another depends upon people abiding in the doctrine of Christ, keeping the whole counsel of God, Acts 20, verse 27. It depends upon individuals doing what God said, abiding in that doctrine, in order to have fellowship. Now, here's what we have to consider. Here's what we have to consider. You know, sometimes that's kind of a vague statement or a general statement, and people say, well, you know, what about fellowship? How can you have fellowship? What does it really mean to abide in the doctrine? What is uh, uh, some elements of fellowship, you might say? Well, let's just look. Because the Bible connects fellowship to a number of things in the Bible. For example, what about our worship? See, worship is a very key element to fellowship. That's usually when most what most people consider fellowship. As a matter of fact, there was a, uh, a man that was... With us, he's moved off now. But this is what he said. He said, I used to invite people to, uh, when he'd invite people to come to our assemblies, he'd say, I'd, I'd tell them, I said, well, won't you come fellowship with us? And I, I said, you know, I said, that, that's, you know, that's good, but here's a, maybe a more scriptural way to say it. You don't want you to come to our assemblies. Because in reality, even though they may come to our assemblies, does not mean that they are in fellowship with us like the Bible talks about fellowship, when it comes to worship, is based again upon keeping what the Lord said. Now notice this. In our worship, here's how Paul compared it. He said, the cup of blessing which we bless, is it not the communion of the blood of Christ? The bread which we break, is it not the communion, the fellowship of the body of Christ? For we being many are one bread and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel after flesh... Are not they which eat of the sacrifices partakers of the altar? What say I then? Now he's going to compare it to idol worship. Notice he says people who are offering to idols, that the idols anything, or that which is offered to sacrifice to idols anything. But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice the devils and not to God. And I would not that you have fellowship with devils. In other words, what you are offering in your worship connects you, connects you by fellowship to the one that you are worshiping. See? So if you're not worshiping in spirit and in truth, John 4 and verse 24, if you're not worshiping in spirit and truth, then you're not worshiping God, therefore you don't have fellowship with God in your worship. Now, I know people have called in on this program before and we've addressed this before, but friends, this is why we are so... Uh, um, what particular or careful in our worship, especially when it comes to an, a part of our worship like the Lord's Supper. I know some of you have been in, in our assembly before and you wonder why maybe you're sitting by yourself there and, you, and, and, and you're not served. It's because we know, friends, that fellowship, fellowship is for those who are in the body of Christ. And it's not meant to offend you, but rather to make the point. This is special. And we're trying to be consistent. Now, now stay with me. We don't want to say 
On one hand, friends, you need to be in the body of Christ. You need to obey the gospel in order to have fellowship with God. And then turn around and hand you a memorial feast that is, in reality, communion or fellowship with God. Turn around and hand that to you and say, now have fellowship with us. On one hand, we told you you're not in fellowship with God. We're not going to then turn around and say, here, you're in fellowship with us. And in reality, friends, most of you don't partake of the Lord's Supper on the first day of the week anyway. If you were somewhere else rather than with us on the first day of the week, more than likely you would not be partaking of the Lord's Supper anyway. See? So, so don't get mad because really you wouldn't be partaking of it any other, play, any other time anyway. See, really what you're getting mad is about is the fact that we're simply saying to you that we're not going to tell you on one hand you're in fellowship and then on the other hand tell you, tell you you are. And really it ought to show you that, you know what, this is, this is a special, special thing. This is a special uh, privilege that people have when it comes to worship. And so worship, worship is indeed an aspect of fellowship. See? It's a benefit. It is a benefit of fellowship in reality. Now, let me ask you this. Can we worship with those who follow creeds and manuals? If fellowship is based upon the Word of God, abiding in the doctrine of Christ, can we really say that we have fellowship with those who follow creeds and manuals? Now, be honest with yourself, friend. If you're in a church that man start, uh, established, if you're in the ch one, a church of men, Baptist church, Methodist church, Lutheran church, Catholic church, whatever, all started by men. If you're in a man-made church, do you really believe that you can worship with another denomination, another church of men, and still have your fellowship? Because you're teaching different things, and we've already established, number one, that fellowship, the foundation of it, is based upon the Word of God, following the Word of God. And by definition, the church of men all have their different creeds and manuals. That's what makes them different. So number one, they're not in fellowship with God. But can you then turn around and say, well, we have fellowship one with another when you, know, you don't even believe the same thing. The Baptists and the Methodists don't believe the same thing. So, so can you really have fellowship one with another? Even if you don't have fellowship with God, you really don't have fellowship one with another because you're teaching different things too. Fellowship is based upon te uh, believing and teaching the same things. See how it works? Fellowship... The key is all believing the same thing. Now watch. The Bible says you have fellowship in preaching the gospel. Paul talked about having fellowship with individuals who were preaching the same thing. Look, in 2 Corinthians 8 and verse 23, he said, whether, do any, whether any do inquire of Titus, if you're asking about Titus, he is my partner. There's the word fellowship. He, he, he's, a, he's in fellowship with me and fellow helper concerning you. Or our brother, or our brethren be inquired of, they are the messengers of the churches and the glory of Christ. Paul said, look, I have fellowship with individuals who are teaching the same thing. There's fellowship between those who teach the same thing. In Galatians 2 verse 9, Look what Paul says. He said, when James and Cephas, that's Peter, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace was given unto me, they gave to me Barnabas, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and aid the circumcision. Now watch. Peter, James, and John were in fellowship with Barnabas and Paul because they were teaching the same things. Don't tell me they were teaching different gospels. They couldn't have fellowship one with another if they were teaching different doctrines. They couldn't have fellowship with one another if they were teaching conflicting 
Gospels. And prior to this, in Galatians 1, verses 6 and 7, Paul said, If any come unto, if, uh, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto, uh, uh, unto grace. And if any come unto you and preach another doctrine, let him be accursed. I'm paraphrasing, butchering, paraphrasing. But Galatians 1, 6 and 7. So why then would he warn the Galatians about coming and following another gospel if he himself was going to have fellowship with Peter, James, and John who were teaching another gospel themselves? You see? Fellowship that bound, that bound Peter, James, and John to Barnabas and Paul was the one gospel that they all taught. And Paul said, we have, we have fellowship. We have fellowship one with another because we're all teaching the same things. And, that, and, that's, and that's really key. So you have fellowship between people who teach the same thing. Now, how is their fellowship? One day I'm going to work on my graphics here so that, that my, my computer screen's right. But how is their fellowship? I'm asking you, friends. How is their fellowship between preachers who were in the ministerial alliance, when they all teach different things, how is their fellowship really there? They don't teach the same things. And the one in Danville, the ministerial alliance in Danville, is Mark still in the house? The ministerial alliance in Danville, uh, what, what groups were all there? Do you remember when Malvester came in? Baptist, Methodist, uh, probably the Pentecostals, the Apostolics there, and here comes a Muslim in. Now, if fellowship is based upon teaching the same thing, how, pray tell me, how can they come in and say, well, we have fellowship all one with another. They're all teaching different things. And one of them doesn't even believe in the same gospel. Doesn't even believe the same Lord and Savior. You see? Fellowship is based upon the That's the key. And people who teach the same thing have fellowship. I have fellowship with Mark. I have fellowship with Johnny. I have fellowship with gospel preachers. I don't have fellowship with Baptist preachers. Because we're not teaching the same gospel. You call and call me brother if you want to. We're not brethren. I'd like for us to be brethren. But it's going to come down to us teaching the same things. And until we're all teaching the same things and speaking the same things and minding the same things, 1 Corinthians 10, 10, we're not going to have fellowship. And I'm not going to call you brother. So, why don't you just call in? Uh, See, that's what we're talking about. We're we're talking about having fellowship based upon teaching of, of, uh, uh, of the gospel. Can I just pick up on line four? Can he pick up on line four? Okay. Anyway, Mark wants to say something. I know he doesn't have a microphone, but if he calls in, uh, uh, he can hear. So, so call on in, bro. Um, so, you, do you see how it's working, friends? Fellowship, the foundation of fellowship is based upon always the Word of God. Either you're following the Word of God or you're, you're, you're teaching the Word of God. Is he on line one? Okay. Here we go. All right. Hey, James. Yeah, I, was, I was just going to say, uh, you know, Jessica was talking about the Ministerial Alliance. I believe it was yesterday on her program and the... Uh, Jessica Griffin? Yeah, Jessica Griffin. We were talking about the uh, the guys that were shooting, had the gun over at DCC. And she made mention of the um, superintendent of the Danville Public Schools was at the Ministerial Alliance meeting when they had the... Uh, I think it was the polit- political debate, mm-hmm. and uh, you know, I just I, I don't know whether she's aware of this or not, but I know that the superintendent of uh, the Denver Public Schools told me personally that God was not at the top of her priority list. So, you know, it, it surprises me that she would be in, even involved in a ministerial alliance meeting such as that. Um, the, the 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 head of the Danville Public Schools. Yeah, the superintendent, Doctor. Said that said that God was not at the top of her priority. Yeah. Okay. So uh, now. So you're gonna be in fellowship. So in other words, what we're saying is, 
everybody in the same ministry alliance are in fellowship with someone who admits God is not my top priority. Yep. Now, she's just there keeping up appearances. Right. Which really gets right down to it. That's what a ministry alliance all is, really. That's, well, that's basically all right. of it, yeah. Right. All right, interesting to know. Well, I, I just thought the, the community ought to be aware of that. Uh, she's on, you know, acting, pretending, just like the ministerial alliance. There's a lot of pretending going on, and she's pretending like she cares about the, the children in this area, but the fact is, is, is she doesn't acknowledge God no more than the, the man-made preachers. Right, right. Well, all thank right. you, James. Good point. All right. All right, now, so preaching the gospel, those who preach the same gospel are, can have fellowship. Now watch this. Here's another way the Bible says that we can have fellowship, and that is by supporting preachers, actually paying the preachers. Now, I know somebody probably will say, well, James, you always talk about not paying the preacher. No, we never said don't pay the preacher. But I wouldn't pay a preacher who's not teaching the truth, for sure. But Paul says that those that are taught in the word should communicate to him that teacheth in all good things. Now, that's the word fellowship. That's not talking about talk to him. That's the word fellowship. And it's the idea of paying people who preach the gospel, caring for them, providing for the things they need. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9 14 that even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. Now, the church at Philippi fellowshiped with Paul, were in fellowship with Paul because of their support. They sent to his needs, and that was fellowship, Paul said. He said, I thank God for every remembrance of you, for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Now, how did they have fellowship in the gospel? How were they in fellowship? Well, Galatians uh, 4, uh, excuse me, Philippians 4.14, he said, Notwithstanding ye have done well, you have well done that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica ye sent once again to my necessity. See, preaching the gospel, preaching the gospel is, uh, is a privilege and those that hear the gospel or are taught by the gospel have a responsibility to make sure that the one who's preaching is taken care of. Now, Paul told the Corinthians, he said, I could ask for something from you. He said, but I'm not going to exercise my liberty and insist that you care for me because I don't want to be a burden to you. The preachers of this area, uh, John, Johnny and I, we don't get funds from the churches where we preach. You know why? We don't want to be a burden to them. We could. We could insist, you know, brethren, we're doing the, we're doing the work. You help us out some. See, so it's not that we're saying don't pay the preacher. What we're condemning in all these other preachers is the excess that they're running to and making merchandise of the people that they're preaching to. You know, in Sid, they're driving Bentleys and Rolls Royces and so forth, living in fine houses and taking tithes of the people which is not commanded in the Bible. But here's the point we're making, friends. When you pay a man to preach, you have fellowship with that person. You have fellowship with him. See? Now, those of you up in Henry County, you need to think about this. You see, BTW, BTW 21, they're a so-called non-profit, non-profit group. And when you buy airtime or you buy commercial time on, those sta on that station, you're in fellowship with them. You're supporting them. As a matter of fact, that's what they call it. They call it sponsoring. You want to sponsor, sponsor a program, sponsor, sponsor, sponsor. That's another word for fellowship. You are fellowshipping in that work by, by supporting them, by, by sending support so they can stay on the air. And you know what? I know brethren have done the same thing. There are some members of the Lord's church that we're not in fellowship with because they're not abiding in a doctrine. They're erring brethren, but they... They, they buy airtime on that on that station too. Well, you just make you just a, sp a sponsor. You're supporting it. See, that's how the Bible talks about fellowship. That's how the Bible talks about fellowship. Now, should we send money then to false teachers? If you send money into Benny Hinn, 
you're in fellowship with him. Anything, anything that he says is wrong, you're in fellowship with. You're, you're supporting it. Jesse DePlanis, I, I think I have Jesse DePlanis on here. I have to find him. Jesse DePlanis bag on TV. We're buying all new television equipments. Please send some money. $1,000 would be good. Well, wouldn't that be nice? Well, if you do send money to Jesse DePlanis, Kenneth Copeland, Benny Hinn, some of these guys, you're in fellowship with them. You're in fellowship with them. False teachers, they all are, and you're in fellowship with them because you send the money. See how that works? Now, if you send money to a false teacher, you're in fellowship with them. Now, that also goes with going down here to the local bake sales. Churches have bake sales. They're out there selling their wares, and you buy money, and you, and you buy from them, you're supporting them. You're supporting them. If I had a choice of going to the Goodwill or the Salvation Army, I'm going to go to Goodwill. I'm not going to the Salvation Army. I'm not going to be a participant. I'm not going to be in fellowship with them in teaching false doctrine. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to put a quarter in the box in the pot either. I'm not going to throw money in the kettle when they're out there ding a in front of Walmart. I, that's fellowship. That's fellowship with them. I'm not going to do fellowship with them. See, I'm not going to participate in their evil deeds. They're not teaching the word. I'm not going to have fellowship with them by promoting them or bidding them Godspeed to do their, to do their, uh, spread their false doctrine. Do they do good? Yes. But are they teaching false doctrine? Yes. See, I'll support another uh, good work that's doing, that's doing good deeds in the community that's not teaching false doctrine. Thank you very much. And by the way, if you'd like a copy of Should I Put a Quarter In?, which is a program that I ran last year on uh, uh, the Salvation Army. Be glad to get you a DVD of that as well. But see, giving money is fellowship. You have fellowship based upon the common faith. If you believe the same thing, you obey the same gospel, then you have fellowship one with another. Jude says in Jude 3, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, there it is, see, it's something they have in common. Something they have jointly participated in. The like precious faith. <clears throat> that is what we're talking about. Now, ask yourself this question. Are denominations of the same faith? Let's, let's be honest with ourselves. Are denominations of the same faith? I hear people talking all the time. Well, what faith are you? Well, I'm a Baptist faith. I'm the Methodist faith. You're of different faiths. Can you really have fellowship when fellowship is linked to a common salvation? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God, Romans 10, 17. But the Baptist faith and the Methodist faith and the Catholic faith all come from a different source. They all come from different men. They come from different uh, creed books, different manuals. And so you know you're not of the same faith. It's not something you have in common. Not something you have in common. So can you really have fellowship? You know, this is why denominations really do not have fellowship with each other even though they claim to. They don't walk by the same rule, don't mind the same things. Philippians 3 and verse 16. Listen to what, listen to what a Baptist preacher, Mr. Randy Linderman, said about, uh, about fellowship. Let's see if I can get over here to... Uh, uh, to click on it. Here we go. Plan. You know what I believe? In addition to everything else, I believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to find Church of Christ, Moravians, Methodists, Baptists, probably even find a few Catholics there. I, I don't believe it. You don't believe that no. at all? Does the Bible say this? Let me ask you this. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in thine heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt. Didn't say you might. Thou shalt be saved. Does it say that? Mm -hmm. So if I belong to a Catholic church and I've said that, you're telling me I'm not going to heaven. That's right. Okay. Well, you're wrong. It's a statement of faith, and I know what the independent fundamental Baptist church believe in, and that's why we have fellowship with them, and that's not why we, uh, that's why we don't go over <laughs> here and try to pull in the, uh, the Catholics and others because there's, there's not fellowship there. Their statement of faith doesn't match what we believe. And I believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to find Church of Christ, Moravians, Methodists, Baptists, probably even find a few Catholics there. Uh -huh. so if I belong to a Catholic church, and I've said that, 
you're telling me I'm not going to heaven. That's right. Well, you're wrong. Uh, that's why we don't go over here and try to pull in the uh, the Catholics and others because there's there's not fellowship there. Their statement of faith doesn't match what we believe. All right. So they don't have fellowship with the Catholics, even though he believes they're going to be in heaven. They don't have fellowship with the Catholics because their statement of faith doesn't match up what they believe. See, they don't have fellowship with each other because they're not teaching the same thing. And you know what, friends? That's why they don't have fellowship with God because they're not teaching what He says. The thing that keeps the denominations apart, that is their doctrines, their different doctrines, are the same things that keep them from having fellowship with God. They don't follow the same rules and that's why we cannot have fellowship with churches of men because they're not following the same rule, Philippians 3.16, that God has set forth. And that's why I don't call them brethren. That's why you can't be my brother in Christ. That's why you can't be my sister in Christ because we're not walking by the same rule, not mind the same thing. Listen. Listen to what Jesus said. In John 8, 31, he said, If ye continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed. If you continue, then are ye my disciples. If you don't continue, then you're not my disciple. It's all about the word. Fellowship, the foundation of fellowship is based upon do you do what Jesus said or not. That's what it gets right down to. Matt, go ahead and put the numbers up. I know we're running short on time here, but we're going to get a few calls in if, if we can. Uh, <clears throat> but this is why we're talking about it so important, friends. In 1 John 1, 6, again, we've already read it. But if you say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. But if you do the truth, then you can be the disciple of Christ. If you do the truth, then Christ says, you know what, you're mine. It's all about what you, uh, what you follow and what you believe. So, you know, this is what we're getting down to. We're getting down to this uh, has to be the conclusion. You can't have fellowship with each other if you don't believe the same thing. If you believe different doctrines... You can't have fellowship one with another. To, to my Baptist neighbors and the Methodist neighbors and the Lutheran neighbors and the Presbyterian neighbors and Catholic neighbors, you can't have fellowship one with another because you don't teach the same thing. What you teach is what makes you Baptist, Methodist, Lutheran, Presbyterian, and so forth. That's why you can't have fellowship with one another. You can get together and hold hands all you want to, sing Kumbaya and say we have unity. But that doesn't make you in fellowship one with another because you don't teach the same doctrines. That's what's keeping you apart. That's why you, you build a building over here and a building over there to worship in because you don't believe the same things, you don't mind the same things, you're not walking by the same rule. That's why you'll never be together. That's why you never be together. And that's also why you won't have fellowship with God because you're not walking by His rules. You're not minding the things that He set forth. You want to worship the Lord? Welcome to the program. Um, yes, I was wondering how the uh, Church of Christ, that statement, once saved, always saved. I'm, I say it again? Ab about the doctrine, once saved, always saved. It's not in the Bible? Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm, I'm asking how y'all feel about it. Like, in other words, can, can you lose your salvation? Well, the Bible says, uh, the, the Bible says that a person can fall from grace, Galatians 5, it, it, it says that you can be lost. As a matter of fact, did you know that every book in the New Testament, except for Philemon, it gives warnings about falling or, or being uh, uh, failing of the grace or losing your salvation, beware, something like that. Every book except Philemon talks about the dangers of not abiding in the doctrine of Christ. So if a person does not abide in the doctrine of Christ, you know, if you continue, well, what if you don't continue? Are you still a disciple of Christ? I mean, that's what Jesus said. So it is the idea of it is man's responsibility to abide in the doctrine of Christ in order to maintain his fellowship. Okay. I appreciate it. Right. I believe that too. All right. All right. Thanks for your call. You want to word from the Lord? Welcome to the program. Uh, yes, I was calling to see you said that you can't have fellowship with each other. Right. 
Not if you're not believing, not if you're not following what, what God said. Or if you're teaching different doctrines. So which church would you recommend someone going to? I would recommend going to a church that teaches the whole counsel of God, one that you find in the book. So what about the Church of Christ? That's the only one I can find in the Bible. Yes, sir. See? I mean, the, the Church of God, you find the name Church of God in the Bible, but you don't find what they practice. They don't, they don't adhere to the Word of God because they have the women preachers and the choirs and the instrumental music and, and so forth. So it's not identical to the church in this book. There's, there, if you're in, uh, I don't know where you are, are you in Reedsville, Martinsville, Danville? Reedsville. You're in Reedsville? We're meeting at the, we're meeting at 250 the Boulevard in Eden, or there's a there's a congregation in Ruffin that that uh, is teaching the doctrine. See, I wouldn't just go to any church. Some people say, well, any Bible believing church, that's that's kind of vague. You know, it's a matter of are they teaching the whole counsel of God? Yeah. So, you know that that's that's what I'd recommend if you want to have fellowship with God. Go to where the Bible's be, where the Bible, the whole counsel of God's being taught. A, a church that you find in the Bible that's doing Bible things in Bible ways. That's the Church of Christ, and then obey the gospel. Then you have fellowship with God. Yes, sir. So, uh, and I'd be glad to, you know, if you want to stay on the line, I'll get your uh, phone number and call you back and give you directions to, uh, you know, to where the the saints are meeting. Would you like that? Yeah. Uh, do you preach at any of them? I preach in Eden, two fifty the Boulevard. Every Sunday. Every Sunday and Thursday nights at seven o'clock on Bible study. But Sundays at ten uh, is where when we have our worship assembly, and then we have Bible study at eleven. Okay. All righty. Do you, do you would you like me to get your phone number? I leave your phone number and contact information. Make sure you get directions. Okay. All right. I'm going to put you on hold. Okay? Okay. Thank I'm gonna put, you. I'm going to put you on hold. That's line four in here, Mark. <clears throat> You're on the word of the Lord. James. Yes. Listen, I've been picking up this a fellow named Billy Lambert coming out of uh, Alabama. Yes, sir. His teaching is very much like you and and Johnny's and you know Marks and everything. Mm -hmm. Is this anyway connected? <clears throat> um, I, from what I know about him, I believe he is a he is a preacher in the Church of Christ. Is it right? Uh, I, th I think he's I think he's teaching the truth. I think the big difference between him and us right. is he won't just come out and tell you if you're in the Baptist Church, you need to leave the Baptist Church. Right, I've noticed that. You know, it's kind of, it's pretty vague. It's pretty vague. You know, you kind of. But, uh, you know, uh, James, I, I really, you know, I really like him. Of course, now, you know, my choice, you know, I've been watching you fellows for the last two or three or four years. I like what's going on. And, but I picked this guy up one night, and I, I kind of liked his teaching. And But he, it's like I said, he teaches a whole lot like you people. Right. And uh, I think he's, you know, I think he's great. But I just wondered if there was some connection. Far, far as I know, he, we would be, we'd be teaching the same thing. Well, listen, I want to tell you this. I'll let you go. Uh, I appreciate your teaching. I appreciate Johnny's teaching. I, all of you fellas, you're teaching the Word, and this is what we need, James. There's so many people that are teaching this day and time that are teaching us. False gospel, right? And they, 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 you know, and they lead so many people astray. They lead them wrong, and these people, they are too lazy to study their own Bible and to know enough that they are being taught falsely, right? And uh, you know, hey, the Lord gave us a mind and eyes, and then if we can't, you know, James. I believe in being a father, but being a but know what you're following. If you don't know what you're following, you can go down the wrong road. Right. Am I wrong or right? Yeah, I believe you're right. I believe you're right on that. Well, let me ask you this: what's what's keeping us from being together? I don't think I've ever met you before, have 
I yes, I met you once. Okay. Before. At a tent meeting or something or we don't get back together. I'm going through some some crisis right now, James, and uh Well I'd be glad to help you if I can. Oh you would. I know that, I know I mean, the type you know. You don't I, I, I see I see you're in you're in North Carolina. Right, right. Uh, yeah, I'm in North Carolina. I'm here in Madison. Okay. Uh, and, and I wish you fellows would maybe open myself a little a little church here in Madison. But I'm kind of looking right. forward to it when it happens, if it does well, happen. Well, let me ask you this. Can 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 I come see you sometime? Uh, yes, but I tell you right now, so I can say it, I'm, uh, I'm in some problems. I'm having some serious operations. Well you, uh, well, you know what, sir? Sometimes, I don't know when I'm available, really. Well, I know, but here, but let me just put this out here for you. Sometimes what the devil does, the devil gets people to put off here in the Word. All right. I put. You I know, just put this. You know. Put, I just. You, have, I've been at Baptist Hospital all day today, James, with right. an operation, and uh, it was put off too long. It's like I said, you can put things off too long. I'm 80 years old. Uh, you know. Well, you hey. know what? You know what, sir? There's a man that lives in in uh, Madison, and he he obeyed the gospel when he was 88, and he's 90 now, and he still comes with us. He he worships with us. Well, I'll I'm tell just, you, we, it's like I said. Uh, this, this, we're gonna get back together. Okay. It's not. Hey, James, this is if it's the Lord's will. Now I pray for the Lord's will to be done in my life. Well, I'm gonna pray that I'm gonna pray that we get together too. Can, can I at least? Can you I just least? do that, and if you do it, and I do it, it will happen, James. Where is Where is Johnny? Johnny is. Uh, he's here. He's. In, I mean, he's in the area. He, is he? He was on TV. I hadn't seen him in the last. Well, he has been out of town. He has been out of town. He'll probably be back on TV Sunday. Okay. Listen, we love you, fellas. Keep up the good work. All right. I'm looking forward to meeting you again. I'll be back in touch. Okay. All right. Later. Okay. Yeah, you never know. You know, the Bible's the Bible talks about putting on. But here's here's what we're talking about, friends. Fellowship. People can't have fellowship one with another if they're teaching different doctrines, and they can't have fellowship with God if they're teaching something different from his doctrine. And you know, you can't have fellowship with God and someone else. If that other person's not teaching the same doctrine or following the same doctrine, that's that's what we're talking about, walking the line, walking with each other. Now, here's what I want you to realize, friends, before we wrap up. Fellowship is so important that God calls people to have fellowship with him. In John 4, verses 22 through 24, Jesus said, The Father seeketh such to worship him. God's a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. God's looking for a certain kind of people. And here's what he's wanting to do. He's wanting to call them into fellowship. You can't have fellowship with God if you're outside the body of Christ. But look what he says. God is faithful who, by whom ye were called unto the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. God calls people. He calls people to have fellowship. He calls them to come into the fellowship of, of Christ. That fellowship is in the body of Christ. He does that by extending the invitation, the gospel invitation. What is that gospel invitation? It is the gospel of Christ. 2 Thessalonians 2.14, Whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. God's calling people into fellowship. He's calling by the gospel. Again, you can't separate fellowship from the Word. You can't have fellowship with Christ unless it's based upon this Word, and you can't have fellowship with one another unless each person is, is teaching the same thing and minding the same thing. That's why, friends, if you're in the Baptist church, please don't call me brother. You're not my brother. I want you to be my brother. I want us to be in fellowship. I want us to be able to say God is our Father, and we're walking by the same rule, minding the same thing, but until then, fellowship is not going to be happen, uh, not going to be had until we're walk both teaching the same thing, minding the same thing, and having the same judgment on, some, on the same thing. Friends, we're going to wrap up. We're out of time. I, I do want to... Uh, how much time do I have? Do I, I need to close? Okay. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to play that, uh, 
public service announcement one more time, but I, I'll, I'll skip it. I'll skip it. Uh, friends, till next time, want to, here's the content information again. And uh, uh, we want you to uh, visit with us if you can, 250 the Boulevard there in Eden, North Carolina. If you're in Martinsville or Danville, 823 uh, uh, Starling Avenue in, in Martinsville, 120 American Legion in Danville. Uh, reach me at the word of the Lord, Jim, com. Until next time, friends, we want to have fellowship with you, but the only way you have fellowship is if you get back to the Bible and make sure that what you're following is a word from the Lord. Have a good night. Are you going to church only to find a club? Are you tired of looking for the Bible but only getting babble? If you want to find people who are studying God's Word, come examine the Church of Christ. We're meeting right here at 250 the Boulevard in downtown Eden. If you want to hear more plain Bible teaching, watch A Word from the Lord Thursday nights at 9 o'clock right here on WGSR.